wonderful father we thank you for this day and we thank you for this word thank you everybody for being here tonight and i'm going to take you straight into the word of god in the book of 1 john chapter 1 and verse 1 for all those of you that have your bibles you can go there so i'm going to read for you from the amplified bible and this is an amazing word it says and and the brother john wrote here and he says we are writing about the word of life so the word is jesus he's writing about the life the abundant life of jesus in him who existed from the beginning so we know that jesus was here from the beginning because even in the book of genesis he talks about uh, uh in verse 26 to 28 he says let us make man according to our image in our likeness from the father the son and the holy spirit so both of them they were all there in the beginning the holy spirit the father and the son but he says here whom we have heard whom we have seen with our own eyes can you imagine for one moment you are walking around in a town and jesus is walking right here next to you can you imagine that i mean seriously i don't know if the disciples realized what they had huh, you think, can, can you imagine what they had? Did they realize that the Messiah is walking next to them? Did they realize what they had with them? Can you imagine if we had to live like that today? If we had to walk and here's Jesus walking next to us. Can you imagine that? I mean, it's powerful. Anyway, he says, whom we have gazed upon for ourselves and have touched with our very own hands. Jonathan, imagine he's Jesus and he can on him fat. Imagine that. I mean, I think this is amazing. Wow. And he says here, and the life and aspect of his being was revealed. It's if I say, V-A-S, who he was, who he represented, everything that he is was revealed to the disciples and the people in the townships and the villages. They saw the God of the heavens and the earth being manifested in a physical form in front of him. I mean, we, we know that Jesus lived. We know he died. We know he was resurrected. We know he went to heaven. We know that we have the Holy Spirit now. But take us back a little bit and think about the power of Jesus walking, sitting next to you eating with you talking with you how do you feel today today we're going to Kapernaum. what we're going to do there is we're going to heal some people imagine that huh i think it's amazing he says he was being revealed and made manifest and he came demonstrated he was demonstrated as we saw as an eyewitness and we are testifying to and declare to you this life, this eternal life in him who already existed with the Father from the beginning, as I just said, with the Father and who actually was made visible and was revealed to us, his followers. So in the beginning, the followers were just the 12 disciples, but now we are his followers. Now we follow him. And so if he was demonstrated in that time, with a physical body, now he's demonstrated in us in a spiritual form. But it's still the same God. It's still Jesus Christ. It's still the Holy Spirit who touches you, who makes you feel good, who gives you joy, who gives you peace. It's still the same God who lifts you up when you are down and out. How amazing is that? He hasn't changed through all the years. The fact that you don't see him physically anymore like the disciples, that, that's irrelevant. His spirit now lives within you. So it's still the same God for he's forever the same. The Bible says he never changes from the beginning to the end. He's always the same. And this is why it's so beautiful for me. He says, what we have seen and ourselves heard, you know, they heard him speaking. You know how many times I sat down and I thought, Oh my goodness, what did his voice sound like? What did the voice of Jesus sound like? Imagine that. Wow, right? <laughs> what? Can you imagine? I'm talking to you now. You know my voice. If you start speaking, I know your voice. 
But if Jesus spoke to them, they knew his voice. They knew the master was talking to them. They knew that the Messiah who came, who they've been waiting for for many years, he is now here revealed and they hear his physical voice in front of them. I mean, I can't even fathom. It's just too much for my mind. I wish that we could just, you know, if you could just hear his voice. Man, he said, we've heard and we are also telling you now so that you too may realize and enjoy fellowship. Listen, listen. To enjoy fellowship as partners with him. As partners and partakers with us. So the message today, the teaching is about Jesus and you becoming partners in life. So that like a man and a woman coming together, you're being partners. So are you a partner with Jesus? Even though he's seated in heavenly places, Ephesians 2 verse 6 says, we are seated in heavenly places. We are now one with the Father because we said yes to Jesus. So now we are children of God. So in other words, we are partakers of his divine nature. We are partakers of all his promises and we are now partners with him. And this is where children of God miss it. Because this word, if we take this word and wake up in the morning and say, come Holy Ghost, let's go. Let's go shopping. Then you ask the Holy Ghost who lives within you to be with you wherever you go. And he will make sure that somebody is there in the vegetable shop that needs the Holy Spirit so that you can have an opportunity to speak to that person and help that person. That is what it means to be partners with him. I think it's beautiful. He says this fellowship that we have, which is a distinguishing mark of Christians, is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And we are now writing these things to you, to me and to you. These things are being written so that we can learn something from it. He says that our joy may be full and your joy may be complete. So our joy will not be completed until such a time as we are truly partners with Jesus Christ. That's what that scripture says. It says you have to be a partner with him, then your joy will become complete. Come on, that's beautiful. And this is the message, the message of promise, which we have heard from him and now are reporting to you. And this is the message. God is light. Like that light is shining now, cannot even compare to the light of God when you see him. God is light and there's no darkness in him at all. No, not in any way. So if we say we are partakers together with him and enjoy fellowship with him, this is praying and interceding and worshiping and we spend time with him. When we live and move and are walking about in darkness, we are both speaking falsely and do not live and practice the truth. So if you say you are with him and you enjoy fellowship, but you walk in darkness and you do something that you know you shouldn't do, then there cannot be any uh, partnership. This is what he's saying here. He says, which, which the gospel represents the truth. You must practice the truth. He said, but if we really are living and walking in the light as we do now as children of God, if we walk in him as he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken, listen, unbroken fellowship with him. Yo, weet jy wat dit beteken? Brag jy dit beteken dat... Jy kan nie die fellowship wat jy met God het, niemand kan dit breek nie. It's so strong, that fellowship, that it cannot be broken. It's like so strong that nobody can break it. That is how strong it is. I mean, that itself, it's wow. And we have unbroken fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses and remove us from all sin and guilt and keeps us cleansed in all its forms and manifestations. And verse 8 says, If we say we have no sin, refusing to admit that we are sinners, we delude and lead ourselves astray. I don't want to talk about that because we know that we are children of God. But he says here, 
the truth which the gospel presents then does not dwell in our hearts. But if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he's faithful and just and true to forgive our sins. Do you know, I've often said to people when I was a young child of God, I've been saying that, how is it possible that whatever we have done, that God can just forget it and forgive it and just... And I never understood that until I really, really had a fellowship with him, until I really came to realize who he is, how he operates, what he's about, what is the gospel about, what is his kingdom. When I start listening and reading and sharing and reading the word and studying scriptures, and when I came into that fellowship with him, that thing fell into my spirit and I could understand. And then now we have to try and forgive others as he forgive us. And this is where the problem comes in. <laughs> Because sometimes it's hard to forgive, man. <laughs> sometimes it's hard to say, I forgive you. Even though you feel in your heart, mm. <laughs> you want to do something great for that person, but you're so mad at them, like, mm, you know. But we have to forgive because we learn from him how we should love. And this is what we need to do. Right. And he say, um, so I... Uh, well, there's many things that he said. I don't want to go into that right now. But this is what I want to speak to you about. This complete partnership is what this message is all about. The word is an encouragement from the mouth of the Holy Ghost. This word. Because it tells us that there's a fellowship that exists in the supernatural realm. You cannot see it. You cannot touch it. You cannot feel it. But you can live there. If you believe it, if you have said yes to Jesus, then you have that fellowship with him. And when you do have that strong fellowship with him, then what it simply means is that nobody can break that fellowship or take it away from you, which means you've come completed in that partnership with Jesus Christ. And that's where we should live, in that partnership every single day. Huh? Yeah. And this word is, is for me such an upliftment because sometimes you feel like, oh God, where are you? I feel so far from you. Come on. So sometimes you feel like, God, where are you? I'm in this struggle. I'm in this problem. I have this trial. I'm going through these tribulations. I don't understand what is going on. And it feels like God is far, far away. But no, he's not because he's within you. And if you have that strong fellowship with him and nobody can break it, the fact that you're going through a trial or a tribulation doesn't matter because nobody can break that fellowship that you have with him. Nobody can do that. As long as you remain in that fellowship with him, you can go through that trial and maybe you can cry and maybe you can scream and maybe you can shout, God, what's going on? And you can do whatever, but nobody will be able to take you away from him because of that fellowship and that partnership. And that to me is one of the most beautiful promises in this word, because when you have that fellowship with God, nobody will be able to remove it from you. Right? And he says here, uh, you need to understand this word. I want to talk to you quickly just about these three words. The word complete, complete fellowship, complete the word partner or partnership. Because if you understand that, this can be a life-changing experience for you. You can understand what this word is all about. The word complete means total or something that's whole, something that's absolute, something that's entirely what you know it is or it has become it has come to fullness so if you have that complete partnership with him it means it has come to fullness that's why nobody can break it listen if you have a glass jaw and you put something in there and it's half and you close it up and you put it down okay and 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 that thing uh is only half it's not full it can break it can break, but if you fill something up to the fullest, it comes to the brim of that thing and you close it up, it's almost like it's stronger than the one that's half. You understand what I'm saying? It's like that. 
He says, and the word partner means your colleague. Come on, you all have colleagues at work. You work with them. So this means if God is your partner, he's your colleague and he works with you in whatever it is that you need to do. That's how beautiful it is. He says he's your cohort. He's equal with you. Your partner is equal. Now, if Jesus, by the Holy Spirit who lives within you, is equal with you, then it means that whoever is trying to do something with you, they will not be able to get past him because of that unbroken fellowship. They won't be able to break you because you are in fellowship with him. And nobody can break that. And so he's your co-worker, in other words, or an associate. He's your associate. All right? That's what it means. And partnership means that you are in companionship with the Holy Spirit all the time. The partnership also means that you're in a joint venture with him and that nothing can break that. So there's a lot of things that we can look about when you look at this, but I want to just... And my message is very short tonight, but I want to read this piece for you that we read in the Message Bible. Because it just opens it up, it reads like a poem, it's very beautiful, and it makes you understand exactly what it is that he's saying to you there. And I want to give you that. 1 John 1 verse 1 on the Message Bible, it says the following. From the very first day, we were there, talking it all in taking it all in we heard it with our own ears we saw it with our own eyes we verified it with our own hands so we could touch jesus we could look on him we could hear him talk could hear his voice man it blows my mind when i think about that really and he says the word of life appeared right before our very own eyes the word of god was there we looked on him, we heard him, we spoke with him, we ate with him, we slept with him in the bushes. We listened to him talking and we could touch him and we could minister to him. We could give him food. We could be with him like in a companion. He says, we saw it happen. And now we are telling you in most sober prose that what we witnessed was incredible. I mean, I think it is incredible. He says, it is this, the infinite life of God himself took shape before our very own eyes. Oh man, it's beautiful. The very infinite life of God himself took shape before us. We could see this God that created the universe become physical and we saw it in front of us in a manifestation. Wow. We saw it. We heard it. Now we're telling you so that you can experience it along with us. This experience of communion with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. And this is what He wants us to have. This is why He's writing this. He's asking us that we must have this partnership with the Holy Spirit. We must have the same thing. He says, our motive for writing is simply this. We want you to enjoy this too. We want you to be in that fellowship that we had with Jesus. We want you to have that fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Come on. Yes, it's beautiful. Yeah. He says now, it's so beautiful. Your joy will double on our joy. So what they say, Anglic, is that they say, if we were happy to have seen that, imagine how you're going to be when you have the Holy Spirit and He's manifested in front of you and living inside of you. Your joy would double. That's what He's saying. And they say, this in essence is the message that we heard from Christ and we are passing it on to you today. I'm giving it to you, to everyone who's listening to this voice note. I'm just looking at the camera. If you are listening to this voice, he's saying, I'm passing it on to you today. He wants you to have that. He says, God is light, pure light, and there's no trace of darkness in him. And then he talks about, you know, if we claim that we experience a shared life with him and continue to stumble in the dark, we're obviously not where we're supposed to be. But if we walk in the light 
as God himself being the light, not just walking in the light or living in the light, but he is the light. We also experience a shared life with one another as the sacrificed blood of Jesus, God's son, purchased all our sins. I mean, that is for me just, you know, it makes me think when I read this, it makes me think of the first time that I ever heard about Jesus. And I, oh, there's a Jesus and you can get free from all the problems of the world and you can live a free life and you can have good things for yourself. And I stood down and I listened. I thought, okay, uh, what's this all about? Like you felt that first time when you said, Jesus, yes, I will be your child and you're going to be my savior. Like that very first time when you did that. That is what happened in the spirit. There's an unbroken partnership that took place. And he took all your problems upon himself. So that you are in unbroken fellowship with him today. So that if something happens, nobody can take this fellowship that you have with him away from you. And it doesn't matter, even though you go through trials and you go through stuff. And there's bad stuff out there. Even though you go through that, nobody can break that fellowship that you have, that partnership, that complete partnership that you have with God. Nobody, nobody can take that away from you. That is your message for tonight. Now, I know there's a lot of things that I, I can talk about, but I don't want to go into the last few uh, uh, things, but I want to remind you before we go that if we walk in the light, as Jesus is in the light and is the Holy Spirit and the Father is in the Son. We have fellowship with the bodily God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Even today, even after the sacrifice on the cross, after he was resurrected, even today, you can bow before me and say, oh God, forgive me. And right there, right that minute, he can forgive you. Even today, the blood still cleanses you from your sin. The blood still takes your problems away. The blood still heals you. The blood still provides for you. The blood of Jesus, what he died for, to give you this complete partnership with him, it can still do for you today what you need. And that is your message for tonight. Isn't that beautiful? Eh? It's beautiful. Okay, I think we're done. I think we can stop the video. Thank you, my brother.